Hello, everyone. My name is Lori Daniel Falk, and I'd like to thank you so much for joining me here today for Your Genes Are Not Your Destiny, Demystifying the Science of Epigenetics. So here we are in the land of COVID, as I like to call it, living a whole new world and doing a recording instead of meeting live and in person. Well, I certainly um, was looking forward to meeting everyone in person and enjoying this wonderful time with you. We are doing it via Zoom and welcome to my home. I am happy to have you here this afternoon as we go about this wonderful journey together. So on your end, you'll get to start and stop this as, as need be. On my end, I've never sat and pre-recorded a two and a half hour presentation before. So I may need to, at one point or another, stop and uh, take a quick break, but then I will come right back. So um, since this is the first time for all of us doing things this way, I'm sure you will be gracious and understanding if it's not all 100% perfect. Well, there you have it. I am a type A Capricorn, so this is a little challenging for me. But all of that said, I'm going to share my screen with you and we will begin. So your genes are not your destiny, demystifying the science of epigenetics. As I said, I am Lori Daniel Falk, a health and wellness coach. I'm also an epigenetic healing artist and author. I've been gifted with an artistic healing modality that's designed to clear your emotional ancestral DNA, helping you to alleviate disease. When combined with my epigenetic prescriptions, these portraits help break up the old programming, making, new, making way for new neural pathways and healthier thoughts and beliefs. The portraits that I've created have found homes in over 25 countries around the world and have graced the covers of numerous magazines. Just to give you a little bit of a background on who I was before I did all of this, I call this my past life. Prior to embarking on this journey to wellness, I was the editor and publisher of an international trade publication called RTW Review or Ready to Wear Review which provided retailers with the fashion industry's pertinent monthly news. I utilized my years of experience as a fashion buyer and retail store manager, as well as my expertise in citing emerging trends to create RTW Review. I was often referred to as the go-to person in the retail fashion industry for trends. During that time, I wrote a series of books on retailing, including electronic commerce, resort retail, and capitalizing on the billion dollar airport retail market, which all combined into one major book called Retailing in Today's World, which summarized the changes that took place in that decade um, as the world of retail changed in so many, many, many ways. So that's who I was before I went on this health and wellness journey. And I did it because I wasn't really in total alignment with doing what I'm really here to do, which is to help people on the inside. So I searched and prayed and asked God and eventually was led to becoming a spiritual life coach, a health and wellness coach, an epigenetic healing artist, and ultimately to creating these epigenetic epigenetic prescriptions that I'm going to share with you here today. So buckle up, it's going to be a wild ride. My why, oh dear, my why, I do it for her, and that her is my mom. May 2nd would have been my mom's 49th birthday that year, and it will always be rem remembered as the day I found out that she was terminally ill. She had only days to live as cancer was ravaging her already frail body. The adult woman in me is grateful for the years we had together. The mystic in me is grateful for my ability to communicate across the dimensions. Yet the little girl in me simply misses her mom. Right around 9-11, Reverend Sheila Graves told me, Lori, your greatest gift comes from your deepest wound. 
It was kind of like a 911 wake up call. I had no idea what that meant at the time, but today I do. That deep wound actually began when I was only 18. After my mother's breast cancer diagnosis and subsequent treatments, my father walked into my room one day and handed me a manila folder. Inside of it were all kinds of alternative treatments for cancer, holistic treatments. With tears in his eyes, my dad said to me, I think there's something in here that can help your mom. I tried and tried to read the research and each time my eyes glazed over, it was just too far over my head. I was the English major, not the science girl. I was the girl that was going to write and create, not be involved in science, or so I thought. So here we are, all these years later. The past two decades have been filled with an incredible exposure to anything and everything that can help people heal holistically. The work I now do is actually built on the science, yep, I said science, of epigenetics. To put it simply, epigenetics tells us that you're not subject to your family's lineage of disease and health issues. Scientists have proven with study after study that it is not the DNA alone that creates disease. Rather, it's your environment and your perceptions of the world that truly dictate your health and well being. The question becomes what can we do as individuals, as people, to clear the unhealthy beliefs and programs that reside within each of us? Those very beliefs that we aren't even always aware of that can silently sneak up on us and create diseases that are not at all how we would like our lives to be. While researching all of this, I had an opportunity to revisit that deep wound of mine. Now that I was finally capable of understanding all of this, I could look at my mother's diagnosis and the emotional trauma that very well may have led to her disease. You see, according to the experts, cancer of the left breast generally stems from an emotional conflict with one's mother. They say the trauma generally occurs approximately 18 months to two years prior to the initial diagnosis. So thinking back to when I was 16, I remembered this was when my mother found out through a very bizarre series of events that she was nearly illegitimate, that her parents had married only six short weeks before she was born. She was devastated by this news. Her heart was broken. She felt unloved and unwanted and was absolutely sure that the very things she had believed her entire life now seemed ever so true. While I can't tell you for certain that this trauma created my mother's disease, what I can tell you is there's a reason my dad put that folder on my desk when I was 18. And there's a reason that God keeps putting this information in front of me. There's a reason that I have friends who are doctors in both the traditional and holistic medical fields who are not only listening, they are paying attention to this research. They are realizing that it's simply time to do things differently. And so while I can't make you any promises, I can offer you one thing, and that is hope. Hope that diseases are not just DNA ailments. Hope that there's a non-traditional approach that will help. Hope that at the end of the day, if we look at these emotional conflicts and we heal them, we will not only be happier, our immune systems will function better. And when the immune system is operating at an optimal efficiency level, the chances of us contracting any type of disease is greatly lessened. We are not our genes. Genes like computers are controlled by code. Genes are a biological tendency for expression. 
changing our state of consciousness can influence or even completely change the tendency for expression. When we do this, our code can actually be rewritten and a different manifestation can be expressed. Think of it this way. We are not the code. We are the writers of the code. So let's just look briefly at what epigenetics actually is. Anne Louise Gettleman's recent article, The New Rules of Health, shows us how our genes are not our destiny. It states simply, the new rules of health are based on the foundational belief that DNA is not predetermined. DNA is really controlled by environmental influences that include diet, exercise, supplements, social support, and even our feelings and thoughts. Dr. Bruce Lipton, the quantum physics leader in cellular biology, proved that it is the environment, not the DNA, which determines health or dis-ease. My dear friend, Dr. Bruce Lipton, I've studied with him for many years, and now I'm going to just share with you a brief four minute video so you can actually hear straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Dr. Lipton is essentially the grandfather, godfather, if you will, of the science of epigenetics. So let's just move over to Dr. Lipton's video. And you can hear it for yourself. The new science has known. It wasn't the genes. It was the way we learned how to live our lives. And that's where the parents come in. Because a child learns how to uh, handle life, how to live life by observing the parents' behavior and then becoming just like the parents. And when we do that, when we take our parents' behavior, we get our parents' diseases. So the exciting part about the new science says, before we blame the cells, we must first look at our thoughts and our beliefs and our behaviors, because these are more important in creating health and disease than are the genes. And this means personal responsibility. And a lot of people get very upset when I say that because it says, yes, you are creating this life. And then they get sometimes upset because they say, uh, they review their life and they said, I, I was responsible for this illness or this problem and all that. And, and they feel very uh, uncomfortable and they don't want to be responsible. And, and then they get mad at me when I say that. But then I say, no, no, no. The words guilt, shame, victim, blame, these words, which make people feel very bad, do not apply to the science for a simple reason. If I never told you how it works, I never showed you how life works correctly, and I just teach you incorrectly, then what happens to your life is not you, you didn't do that. That wasn't your intention. That, you just didn't know how to operate the, the biology. So if you don't know how to operate it and something goes wrong and it doesn't work right, I can't blame you and say that was your fault. The only time I can do that is once you know how it works, then you become responsible to make sure you do it right. So the past is history. The past, whatever happened, we have no responsibility for it because no one told us. The future is when we have responsibility. But that's when it gets very exciting because when people do know how to make it work, then disease will disappear. War will disappear. Health, harmony, a garden will come back to this planet. So that's why this new science is so important because it gives us back a power. We're not victims of our lives. We are masters because we can change our thoughts and we can change our behavior and we can change our beliefs. And when we change them, we change our biology. So. We are the masters of our lives, not the victims of our genes.
started to laugh because I said, people think when we die, we go someplace to heaven. And I realized the first time in my life, this is heaven. This is where you get to create. This is where you get to have all the wonderful experiences of life. When you leave here, you leave with the memory, but not the ability to create and not the ability to sense. And so uh, the greatest joy came to me because I said, well, if this has happened, then I'm going to stop living in hell and turn it into what I want. And for me, I, I've created from that change of my belief, a life, the former life is gone. The current life, a life of joy, health, happiness, and beauty, because I know I am creating it. And this is why we are here. So I hope everyone can get that, because if everyone creates heaven on earth, then by definition, the whole earth turns into what we call heaven. all would love right now more than anything it has been a wild ride the past six months and um, the rest of 2020 is still ahead of us but meanwhile creating heaven on earth is something that I think we all could use a little bit more of and the, and the reality is that we can we can create heaven on earth we can change our old programming and create new neural pathways in our brains and new ways of being in the world. And that's something that I want to share with you today, some ways that we can do that. Think of it this way. The issues are in our tissues and human emotion is the glue that keeps those issues in our tissues. Hmm. The Western sy system of allopathic medicine can offer emergency life-saving surgeries, as well as subdue and control symptoms. Yet the root cause of disease is rarely addressed. Science has now shown us that it is not the physical DNA that creates disease. Rather, it's the environment the DNA exists in. Put simply, we are not just a physical body. We each have an aura of subtle bodies, including the emotional, mental, spiritual, and etheric fields. Our emotions impact that DNA dramatically by setting off a chemical reaction that can either turn on or turn off those genes. So it's not that we don't have inherited DNA, we do. It's just a matter of whether we are going to lead the same lifestyles that our parents, grandparents, and ancestors did, or we're gonna shift those beliefs and create different ones and, and create healthier ways of being in the world and not trigger that DNA. Because our emotions and thoughts, our energy, if they're not expressed in motion, they can become stuck in the body causing a block in energy flow. And much of this stuck energy is what I refer to as ancestral emotional DNA. So epigenetic prescriptions. How I got here is an, is an interesting experience in and of itself. The art form, the angelic message portraits that I was gifted with, a number of years ago actually ultimately led to this and it all ties together so let's see how this all unfolds and let's take a deep dive into the ancestral emotional dna patterns in an effort to help each of you and your clients look at your emotional dna and how it's impacting your prospective health and well-being I have created a new modality that I refer to as epigenetic prescriptions. They are designed to help you uncover your ancestral emotional DNA. 
Epigenetic prescriptions are simply a practical application of the science of epigenetics. Think of it as you can heal your life on steroids or Bruce Lipton's biology of belief simplified. They offer you a complete assessment of your emotional DNA. Epigenetic healing artist, health and wellness coach, and founder of this group, Head to Heart Healing Community. I wanted to jump on here this evening to chat with you about something that is very near and dear to my heart, something that I am extremely passionate about. And heaven knows, as a young girl, I never thought I'd be passionate about anything scientific. Well, careful what you ask for. You just might get it. Anyway, the topic that I want to talk to you about is actually epigenetics, the science of epigenetics. Say, what? I know, it's kind of a mouthful, but we're hearing more and more about it these days. And Dr. Bruce Lipton, who's kind of the founder of the science of epigenetics, has actually scientifically proven that it's not the physical DNA that creates disease. Rather, it's the lifestyle environment. Well, what does that mean? Of course, what impacts our lifestyle? Our way we eat, how much we exercise, how much stress we're under, how well we sleep, all of those things definitely play a factor. But the one thing that plays an even bigger factor is our emotions and the subconscious beliefs that are actually running the show. Did you know that 90 to 98% of the time you are reacting based upon subconscious programs? That's kind of crazy, isn't it? When you think about it, that means that only like two to 8% of the time you're using your conscious mind to dictate your life and where you're at and where you're going. Well, the thing about that is that these reactive patterns that are going on in the subconscious actually are setting off chemical reactions. Think about how you feel when you're in love. It's just like this euphoric feeling and you can feel it coursing through your veins. What do you feel is actually a chemical reaction from the emotion of love. And the same holds true when you're scared. You're in that fight or flight. Oh my gosh. It's like you can feel your breathing being restricted and your chest contracting and, and there's another chemical reaction that's going on. Only that one's not nearly as pleasant. Well, the bottom line is that if we can learn how to clean up that subconscious programming, we can actually carry on a different life than our ancestors did. I know many of you out there probably have family histories of diseases that you'd really rather not contract yourself. Family histories, family patterns, things that you just, you don't want your life to be about. Well, the good news is that only 1% of disease is actually linked to that physical DNA. So what does that mean? That means that it's all about subconscious programming and there's a way to fix that and change it. Because as I've often said, it's just learned behavior. And anything that's been learned can be unlearned and relearned in a healthier way. So I've been blessed with this incredible modality that I'm referring to as epigenetic prescriptions. And what we do is that we look at that actual physical disease patterns that your parents had, that your grandparents had. Yeah, I know I said it doesn't make a difference. Physiologically, it doesn't. Hey, Kath, how are you? Hi, Wendy. Um, it doesn't make a difference, but it does give us a roadmap or a blueprint. Because once we know what those disease patterns are, 
then we can look at what were the emotions and or beliefs that had to be on board to set off the chemical reactions to trigger the DNA to create those diseases. That's kind of exciting, isn't it? So, so that blueprint of that family history of disease actually gives us some information that is vitally important. Because once we know what that emotional stew is, if you will, that you were raised with, we can take a peek inside your subconscious and you'd say, how much of that is going on today? How much of that is impacting your, your physiology? How much of that is still setting off chemical reactions that could trigger that physical DNA? Well, if you know you've got a family history of heart disease or you know you've got a family history of cancer, I'm willing to bet those are two, two things that none of us would really particularly like to draw into our lives. So if we can fix it at the subconscious level, if we can clean up that emotional DNA, wow, we have a shot at actually having a healthy life and not having to worry about the physical DNA that resides in our bodies. I know there's a lot of people out there that get DNA testing done and they you know, have mastectomies or hysterectomies or all kinds of really invasive procedures as preventative measures. Well, <laughs> let's look at the emotional DNA as a preventative measure and understand that it's not the physiology anyway. Let me give you an example. I actually have a very dear friend who was diagnosed with a really severe autoimmune disease. And her doctors put her on some super heavy meds and told her that she'd have to be on these meds for a minimum of one year. Well, we chatted about it and I said, why don't we do an epigenetic prescription and just check it out and see what we can do. So we looked at her family history of diseases, we certainly looked at her current disease, and we looked at, we took a deep dive, not just a, um, I love Louise Hay and I love the book, You Can Heal Your Life, but it's, the work that I'm doing takes a much deeper dive than that. And we really take a look at some emotions, beliefs, constructs that have to be in place for that level of disease to occur in the body. And so we did that. And once we understood the emotional stew she was raised in, that created the subconscious programs where that were really kind of ruling her life right now, we were able to then say, okay, they exist. No shame, no blame. It's just a fact. It's the way life worked. And then we went after it with three different things. We used aromatherapy, sound therapy, and color and art therapy to break up those subconscious patterns. And once we had those all broken up, and it can be a little uncomfortable, as you're releasing all of that, as any of you who've done personal growth work know. But she got through that part. And then we went in and we created new affirmations and new beliefs and reprogrammed the subconscious. We created the new neural pathways, the healthier ones, the new ways of being in the world. And are you ready for this? Six weeks later, she went back to her doctor. They did more blood work. And they cut her meds back by 50%. Six weeks. They said it would be a year. They said, we don't know what you're doing, but whatever you're doing, it's working. So I use that as an example, mostly because there's an actual statistical blood test that we saw, and we saw a reduction in medications. I've seen many other incredible, amazing things happen with these epigenetic prescriptions. And it's exciting. It's nothing short of life-changing. And it certainly does put your destiny in your hands instead of just letting it be this unconscious program that's going to dictate whether you stay healthy or not. Here's what I know for sure. I am so passionate about this. If you want to know why I'm so passionate about this. You can go to my website, 
head to hearthealing.com and go to the about section and read my why. And you'll learn the story of my mom and how when I was 18 years old, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. And crazy as this sounds, I remember time and time again, sitting and talking to my mom and telling her that she had to shift her beliefs and she had to shift her thinking and she had to think, shift the way she was actually verbalizing things if she wanted to love. I was 18. The word epigenetics, I don't even think was around at that time and heaven knows I hadn't read anything about it and didn't know anything about it. But I knew deep in my heart and soul, that that's what needed to happen. And I don't want to go on and on and on on this Facebook Live about it, but I encourage you to go there and read the story because it's poignant, it's touching, and it's so deeply my why. I don't want what happened to my mom to happen to anybody else in the world. And I have a way to help you shift that subconscious programming in such an actually almost effortless way. Will there be a little struggle? Sure. Will it feel a little uncomfortable? Okay, but not nearly as uncomfortable as if those disease patterns were to actually take hold. Nothing like chemo, nothing like radiation, nothing like massive surgery. You can do it. The aroma therapy, color therapy, art therapy, sound therapy, and then simple reprogramming of those limiting subconscious beliefs. And you know what, guys? I am like so passionate about this, and I want the world to learn about it more because recently I've had a couple of my friends and clients come to me, and they already had some pretty serious stuff going on. And I would sit with them and I would listen to those subconscious beliefs and look at the patterns and understand it. And I just, in my heart of heart of hearts, just wish that they had come to me and we had done this beforehand. I mean, it still works once the physical has actually happened. We can prevent it from continuing to manifest. And all of those things are amazing and wonderful, but why let it get to that point? Why not just take a deep dive, take a peek at that family history, find the emotional components, and shift it and change it? I want to help you. I want to help you make a difference with your lives. I want to help you stay healthy. Because in my world, I have this knowing that your health is your wealth. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. Your health is your wealth. Okay, just had to make sure we were all on the same page here. For some reason, I lost my Zoom sighting. So we're back. So I, I know that was a Facebook Live. I did that, I don't know, last summer, I think. But I listened to it recently, and the passion, I just wanted you to, to hear it. Not that I couldn't have redone it, but the passion came through so poignantly that I wanted to share it raw and real, just, just like that, just like it was. So your health is your wealth, and there's so much we can do to get things to be better, to get things to be happier to create that heaven on earth. So let's go back to sharing my screen. And actually show you some of the process of how this works. So this is a sample of uh, actually a client intake form. But as we're um, As we're talking about this, I want you to understand that the basic principle of this is that we look at the family lineage of disease patterns. And once we know what the diseases are, then we go in and we find the emotional components 
that had to be on board for that DNA to manifest into the physical disease. And we essentially find, we start with the grandparents, and we essentially find the emotional stew, if you will, that your grandparents raised your parents in. And then we go and do the same thing with parents. And we find the emotional stew that epigenetic, oh, I'm so sorry. There we go. Um, this is the first, actually it's only the second time I've used Keynote, so I'm kind of getting used to that too. Keynote, Zoom, Datto, I mean, it's so many platforms. Anyway, back to what we're here to, to discuss. If we can just look at the disease patterns and then back into the emotional components that had to be on board, we find that emotional stew. We understand how your parents ended up who they are by looking at how your grandparents raised them. And then we look at how those disease patterns manifested or didn't manifest in from grandparents to parents. And again, we under, uncover the emotional components that needed to be on board for those disease patterns to take hold. And now we found the emotional stew that the client or yourself was raised in. And it's rather uncanny. I was gifted with this modality, just like I was gifted with the art form that goes with it. And what I want you to know is I've been nothing but amazed at how, um, how incredibly well this works. I've been coaching or involved in studying coaching and, and psychology and all of these things for a couple of decades. And what I know is that people resist this deep level of change because they don't want to admit that the stuff is really going on. There seems to be some shame or guilt around it all. And so what ends up happening when we use these epigenetic prescriptions is that it short circuits that um, learning curve or that uh, vulnerability piece. Because once they see that it came from their paternal grandmother or their maternal grandfather or whomever it was, and that it, it's just a passing down of emotional DNA, they're like, oh yeah, I got that going on. And they don't care because they can, I, I don't like this word, but I think psychologically what's going on in their mind is that they can say, oh yeah, well, it's not my fault. And you know, it's from my parents or it's from my grandparents. And, and then they can be vulnerable enough to admit what's really going on in their life. So, so when I start with a client, I, I send them this, client intake form and we get a little background on the paternal and maternal grandparents and then the the actual parents mother and father and once we have that information then i ask the client or yourself whomever this is being done for to look at your own unhealthy patterns or diseases and once we have all of that together then we go and look at all right we know what the diseases are we know what the diseases are now what are we going to do now we go and we find the references to get to the emotional components behind the disease patterns now i use a number of different um, resources depending on the level of, of issues we're dealing with. And I start with the basics. I start with Louise Hay's book, You Can Heal Your Life. And it's very um, foundational and it's very cut and dry. And then I get, I've gotten guided to go and do an in-depth analysis. And I get this information at a website called flowsandforms.com. And this is how they describe their site. Anyone who desires to live a balanced physical, emotional, and mental life must free oneself from the beliefs inherited from parents, family, clan, society, religion, and teachers, and return to the often undervalued process of determining what does and what does not work for them individually. You see, everything starts with consciousness. 
any symptom that the body develops is merely a wake-up call for us to understand what we must be aware of in our lives and change both our thinking and our behavior. So the flows and forms site in and of itself goes much deeper. I mean, Louise Hay, for example, might say that cancer is repressed anger. Flows and forms is gonna go deeper into what that really looks like. And then in the example of cancer, there's a site that I stumbled upon out of New Zealand called alternative-cancer-care.com. And this site, which is specifically for cancer, but it lists like the top 40 cancers and gives the emotional root cause behind each one of them. And this site, the way it's described is, cancer has long been associated with stress. However, within mainstream oncology, stress is generally considered of relative low importance as the primary causal factor in the genesis of cancer. Inspired by God, spiritual messenger Glenn Russell, who's the founder of this site, brings forth new, never-before-seen concepts of identifying stress as the primary instigator of cancer. This document or website has been created to help medical staff, researchers, and lay people understand clearly the evidence-based relationship between cancer and stress and emotions. And that was where I found that cancer of the left breast, which was my mom's primary cancer, was generally um, the underlying root cause was a conflict with the mother. And it, once I saw that, everything just kind of, like the pieces of the puzzle went right into place. So up until a couple of months ago, this was kind of a four-step process. I looked at, once I got all these emotional diseases, or emotional components behind the diseases, then I would look at what is the aromatherapy that can break up those emotional patterns? What's the sounds therapy or solfeggio tones? And what's the art or color therapy that can help us with that? And then I went in and created affirmations. In the last number of months, I've been introduced to the Healy Resonance Analysis, and I, there was no way I couldn't incorporate it into this because it's short-circuiting the process even more. The Healy Resonance Analysis actually analyzes your entire being from the quantum field, and it then delivers the specific frequencies needed for your optimal health in real time. So it works on the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual fields simultaneously. And what it does is, through the use of 144,000 different frequencies and 120 programs, and Bach flower essences, and bush flower remedies, and gem elixirs, and the I Ching, and Materia Medica, it really starts to loosen the subconscious hold on those beliefs and people just are flying through faster and faster and faster. It's magical actually. So those are the, the tools that we use to get to this, this next form, which is, I call it the epigenetic prescription practitioner form, where we look at those underlying emotional conflicts. So, I take the, the list of diseases and then write out what the, the emotional conflicts were with the paternal grandmother, the paternal grandfather, and then in turn the same information for the maternal grandparents. And so we really have that emotional stew. And it's, it's kind of fascinating because the clients, as it's unfolding and as you're describing the story to them, if you will, they're amazed at how uncannily accurate it is. And they just, they can really see the connection. And as they're seeing the connection with their grandparents, and then in turn with their parents, by the time we get to their emotional conflicts, it's like, oh, thank God. Thank God I now know where that came from. And they're starting to, to really get 
that if we can get in there and work at this emotional level and clean up the subconscious, that combined with proper diet and exercise and nutrition and all those, those wonderful things change the environment. And by changing the environment, they don't have as much concern about having a family lineage of heart disease or cancer or diabetes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really, really quite magical. So again, listing those components that we use in the epigenetic prescription part, if you will, the actual, what are the prescription recommendations? We come up with a list of essential oils or flower essences. And then in the sound healing category, I really love the Solfeggio tones. They're so potent and so powerful. And we'll go into a little bit more depth and detail about all this as we move through. But again, the four steps became five now. So number three, we have the epigen epigenetic emotional healing art. And then the biofeedback frequencies help as well to bust up those old patterns and emotions. And then we create the affirmations that go and reprogram the subconscious. And it's amazing. So once we have the emotional components and related subconscious programs, we move on to the things that will break them up in a nonlinear fashion, bypassing the cognitive mind. And that's the key here. We don't want people to get wrapped up in their brain. So I... I actually was guided to put components in here that bypass the mind. So if you're breathing in essential oils and you're using uh, that sense, your brain doesn't get in there and go, oh, what's going on? It just enjoys that aromatherapy. So the uses for essential oils, both for health and emotions, are vast and different. Plants have many beautiful qualities, but the plants themselves are not the only bounty. The essential oils that are extracted from plant leaves, flowers, stems, roots, or bark are incredible tools for us to use in our everyday lives. And when we're looking for natural and healthy solutions in a more potent form, the oils are it. You can diffuse them or apply them top topically. Each one will be a little bit different and up to personal choice as well. And so how do we choose the oils that are needed for specific emotions to be healed? Well, there's a couple of key references that I like to refer to. So I'm holding this one up. If you can see my picture up on the top, this is actually the Emotions and Essential Oils Guide that is listed on the page and it's available at www.enlightenhealing.com. And I, I used a lot of PowerPoint slides in here so that you could just take um, pictures along the way and you would have access to this information. We'll also be sending you some documents where you should have actually probably received them prior to starting the class that have some of this information included as well. So this, this wonderful little book that lists all the different emotions and the oils that can be used to break up those emotions, fabulous if you're a hands-on kind of person, it's a great tool. But there's also, ready for this, there's also an app that you can put onto your cell phone. And again, same thing. It's called the Essential Emotions app. And it looks like that. Essentially, it, you can either put in the emotion and it will then guide you to the oil, or you can put in the oil and it'll tell you what emotions it covers, but it's beautiful. So we know from this perspective, we are looking at the emotions that had to be in place. So the other first step of the process showed us the diseases and showed us the emotions that are contributing to those. Now we want to bust them up. So we use these resources to find the oils that are going to help us to do that. And just, let's just use an, an example here. If we look at um, someone who feels abandoned, the number one oil and that is recommended is frankincense. And what I love about the app is that it actually helps you to look deeper, that it asks specific questions like, who or what has left me alone? 
Do I feel loss over a change in my life? And then it gives you some declarations or affirmations right in the app. I am now perfectly supported in every moment. I am now open to trusting and acknowledging that I am well provided for. And then it takes it a step further and often gives you a visualization. See yourself held in loving arms. Allow comfort and healing to flow into your heart. Fabulous little tool. tool. I think it's like 10 bucks. Aromatherapy, let's just take a look at aromatherapy in general. Our sense of smell is more powerful than we think it to be. And it has great influence over our thoughts, emotions, moods, behaviors, and memories. Olfaction, the sense of smell, varies greatly from other senses that the human body possesses. Sense that we inhale are processed through a completely different pathway. Before they reach the brain, they travel through other regions, notably areas controlling memory and emotions. Essential oil molecules stimulate the limbic system of the brain or the emotional brain itself. Essential oils extracted from different parts of plants are extremely volatile in nature. This makes them easy to inhale and allows you to exploit the olfactory power of plants for healing. From the removal of toxins, the oxygenation of cells, and the opening of emotionally stored memory. You ever like walked into someone's home and you smelled homemade chicken soup and it took you right back to your childhood? It's that kind of effect. Aromatherapy is by no means a miracle cure for grave emotional issues, but countless studies suggest that they do help relieve particular emotional issues and emotional states. Careful and proper use of essential oils can go a long way in balancing your emotional health. So the second piece of the epigenetic prescriptions is that helps to break up the patterns is the selfagiotones. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with these, but they are as I said, so powerful. The selfagiotones make up the ancient six tone scale thought to have been used in sacred music, including the beautiful and well-known Gregorian chants. The chants and their special tones were believed to impart spiritual blessings when sung in harmony. Each selfagiotone is comprised of a frequency required to balance your energy and keep your body, mind, and spirit in perfect harmony. These are powerful healing tones. I recommend listening to them once and then noting the impact it has over the next 24 to 48 hours before listening again. And there's a reason for that. I will tell you that when I was first introduced to these by a friend of mine, I thought, oh, well, she gave me one of, the, one of them. They come on in a set of CDs, and she gave me one of the CDs, and I just listened to it. I know it's 20 minutes. Might have listened to it four or five times. Didn't think anything of it. Woke up in the middle of the night, and I thought I was having a gallbladder attack. And I'm like, what in the world? Anyway, I thought back to what I had eaten. I hadn't eaten anything different. I had no idea, no clue what it could have possibly been. And as I'm sitting there rubbing my stomach, like three in the morning, I'm going like a light bulb went up <laughs> in my head. And I went, oh my gosh. I listened to that self tone. I wonder if it, was, if it was gallbladder related. And sure enough, I went and looked at it. And it was the exact one that was connected to releasing emotions that get stuck in the gallbladder. <laughs> so that taught me the power of, of the self tones. And it also made me want to say to you, listen and then wait. See how your body reacts. So the ones that, that I have used the most in my practice with my clients actually come from a company called wholetones.com. And our link is at the bottom of this slide. And in there, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different ones. And these are just the brief analysis. I will get into in more depth as to what each one does. 396 liberates guilt and fear. 417 is for the undoing, undoing situations and facilitating change. 444 
is the master key that envelops you in peace. 528 is for transformation and miracles or DNA repair. 639 is for connecting relationships. 741 is for expression and solutions. And 852 hertz is for returning to spiritual order. Again, we'll get into more detail about each one, but that just gives you a brief overview of what those tones do. So now we've got aromatherapy healing, we've got self agio tone healing. So again, this is a little bit more in depth about where this all came from. The self agio tones are a series of six electromagnetic musical tones that the Gregorian monks were said to use when they chanted in meditation. They were rediscovered in 1974 by Dr. Joseph Boulal. I'm sure I didn't say that right, but you can see it on the screen. The self frequencies are said to deeply penetrate the conscious and subconscious mind, stimulating deep inner healing. Dr. Puglio was intuitively led to rediscover these healing frequencies in the Book of Numbers, a book in the Hebrew Bible. Using a numerological technique to decipher the six repeating codes he found, the result was the rediscovery of the self frequencies. Interesting. Physicist, inventor, and electrical engineer Nikola Tesla once said, if you only knew the magnificence of the three, six, and nine, you would hold a key to the universe. Interestingly, three numbers form the root vibration. These three numbers, three, six, and nine, form the root vibration of the six solfeggio frequencies. Thank you, Nikola Tesla. Genius extraordinaire. So, epigenetic healing art also helps with the breaking up of these patterns. The impact of the arts in the process of healing was recognized early on by Hippocrates, who understood the importance of uplifting his patient's spirits. Over the past 15 years, there's been a dramatic growth in the use of the arts in medicine. In fact, renowned institutions such as Duke University Medical Center and Dartmouth Medical School are doing research on the subject of art as a healing tool. These recent scientific studies show us that art heals by changing both a person's physiology and their emotional attitude. The angelic message portraits that I was gifted with are actually epigenetic energy healing tools. These portraits are energetically encoded with emotional healing energy. They're designed to work with you at a heart level enabling you to assim assimilate that energy directly into your emotional field, again, bypassing the cognitive mind and enabling you instant access to it without the need for total intellectual comprehension. The art and its corresponding mes messages for emotional healing can be found at my website, wisdomoftheangels.com. Now, I'm not saying that this is the only art that heals emotions. But since it is the art that I have access to and understand more fully, it's the art that I've incorporated into this process. But feel free to experiment on your own as well. According to the Art as a Healing Force organization, when a person experiences art, the body's physiology changes from one of stress to one of deep relaxation, from one of fear to one of creativity and inspiration. Art and music put a person in a different brainwave pattern. Art and music affect a person's autonomic nervous system, their hormonal balance, and their brain neurotransmitters. Further research tells us that, tells us this, neuro Physiologists have shown that art, prayer, and healing all come from the same source in the body. They are all associated with similar brainwave patterns, mind-body changes, and they are all deeply connected in feeling and meaning. Art, prayer, and healing all take us into our inner world. 
the world of imagery and emotion, of visions and feelings. The whole idea behind the infusion of art and music into one's world is that it brings the observer into the present moment. There is nothing else that matters except the joy of this experience. It takes our cares away. It puts our fears on hold. And for that moment in time, nothing else matters. Those feelings take us out of the limiting beliefs of the subconscious into our conscious mind of pure potentiality where anything is possible. This is the emotional state from which healing can begin. And here's the exciting part. Hospitals all over the world are incorporating music and art into patient care. Doctors, nurses, and therapists are now working with artists and musicians to heal people of all ages with many conditions, including cancer and AIDS. Now everyone understands that cancer is as much, if not more, epigenetic than genetic. States Jean Pere Issa, a researcher from Temple University. Medicine can do extraordinary things today. With the arts, it can do more. Put simply, art changes us. As art and healing merge, the, feeling of, the field of art will be changed and the field of med medicine will be changed forevermore. Let me say that again. As art and healing merge, the field of art will be changed and the field of medicine will be changed forevermore. It's beautiful, the blending of these holistic treatments. And then we reprogram with affirmations. Healing affirmations are to be repeated on a daily basis. Once we've broken up the subconscious programs and decluttered them, those very patterns that aren't serving you well anymore, it's just time for a bit of reprogramming. So affirmations are a helpful tool in reprogramming our inherited subconscious beliefs and programs. A simple generic affirmation to begin with is, I am willing to release the pattern of my subconscious that has created this condition. Next, you'll want to repeat the affirmations indicated below that are pertinent to your specific situation. So whenever I'm filling out these sheets, I will have that piece of information in there. Telling them that statement, and then I list their individual affirmations as well. And once you've repeated them several times, assume that you're already in the process of healing. Whenever you think of the condition, repeat the above steps. So all these affirmations are actually created on an individual basis. When we look at the emotional components and beliefs that are on board, then we create affirmations to reprogram them. And as I mentioned before, a helpful tool for this is the Essential Emotions app that you can get for your cell phone. And that is found either on, if you have an, an iPhone, it's at the App Store. If you have an Android, it's at the Google Play Store. And that app will actually list affirmations and visualizations for each emotion. And the biofeedback frequencies from the Healy Resonance Analysis are the, the fifth and key important step in this. And you actually, when you're doing the analysis piece, hold the intention of the affirmation in your heart as you're doing the analysis. And it's just amazing at the data that will be revealed. The Healy Resonance Analysis is a personal biofeedback device that uses a quantum science to analyze and heal your bioenergetic frequencies. As an added component to the epigenetic prescription process, it does two specific things. As I mentioned earlier, it works on the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual fields simultaneously. 
and it gives you an analysis in real time. That's key. Not many of these biofeedback devices do that. It gives you an analysis in real time of which bog flower remedies, Australian bush flower essences, and Alaskan gem elixirs you need. And all of these aid in the rapid release of stuck emotional patterns and beliefs, especially when you have the client or yourself really focusing on those new thought patterns that you want to create. So you want to start with the end result in mind. And when you do, the healing takes place so much faster. If I had done this presentation three months ago, I wouldn't have necessarily even known about this device. But I'm telling you, it is nothing other than amazing at how accurate it is and how much quicker it helps clients to release these patterns. And this isn't just coming from me. Everyone that I know that's utilizing these devices in their practices, any type of energy practice, any type of coaching, they're all saying they're shocked. I actually use this when I'm just working with my coaching clients one-on-one -on -one and I just start running those bach flowers and bush flowers and gem elixirs and it's like, wow, they just, you can see the client relaxing. You can see them releasing the beliefs. It's otherworldly, honestly, otherworldly. So now that you have a basic understanding of what an epigenetic is and how it's created, Let's just take a quick peek at a few examples of them. I was hoping when this was going to be live and in person that we were actually going to take individuals out of the audience and, and do some, some live um, demos on this and that you'd have an opportunity to, to ask questions. And that said, please know that once you've completed and watched this presentation, I am only an email, text, or phone call away. I, I know that you're going to have questions and I am more than happy to answer them. So feel free to reach out at any time. My contact information will be on the handouts and it will also be shown at the end of this presentation. So let me just take a sip of water here. See, usually the facilitator gets to take a breath when the, when the people are raising their hands and ask, asking the questions you know, at least get to stop talking for a minute but welcome to the land of zoom okay so this is a, a big one i know especially in the midwest weight issues and it's certainly a big one for people in this country as as we age the aging population, weight issues become more and more of a concern. So we're gonna start with an easy example. And rather than delving deeply into the ancestral lineage piece and those disease patterns, we're just gonna look at how the actual prescription piece works for a specific disease or issue. So let's say the client comes in and they, they wanna lose 20, 25 pounds. And they've been trying, they've been doing everything. I actually had a client who lost 50 pounds and she flatlined after that. She just couldn't, it was like she couldn't get past that. She still had another 50 that she wanted to lose and she couldn't until we actually got in there and broke up the emotional components that were holding that next 50 pounds in place. The first 50 came off with diet and exercise. That was the easy part. But there was still this piece of her, her subconscious piece that was just saying, oh no, oh no, oh no, there's more here. So, so the probable emotional root cause behind weight issues can be any of the following. A fear or need for protection, could be running away from feelings, could be insecurity or self-rejection, could be seeking fulfillment, it could be a fear that may be a cover for hidden anger and a resistance to forgive. So knowing that those are the potential emotional root causes, we then look up either in the app or in the book, or you can go online and do a Google search. 
for oils that will help with fear. In this case, we found for, for the fear-based emotions, juniper berry or cassia. For the avoidance piece, we found vetiver or juniper berry. For insecurity, we found cassia and bergamot. For protection and feeling safe again, we found lemon or on guard. On guard is a doTERRA blend that happens to be connected to the emotional emotions and essential oils app and book. So that's why I listed it. It's not to say that there aren't other oils out there that could help as well. The oil of truth or overall emotional healing is frankincense and the oil of forgiveness and support in addressing one's own pain is serenity. So what you'll often see when you're, when you're doing these is that there will be oils that carry over into different emotional patterns. Like we can see that juniper berry repeats a couple of times. We can see that casio re re repeats a couple of times. In a situation like this, I tell people, okay, so these are all um, oils that are gonna help break up those patterns, but for sure you wanna start with those two because it's, it's showing up in, in two specific areas that could be contributing. Plus when you're one-on-one -on -one with, with the client or if it's yourself, you'll know which of these you resonate with more. Is it the fear or is it avoidance or is it insecurity? And that will help you make the decision as to which oils to use as well. The salfagio tones that can contribute to breaking up these belief patterns are the following. 396 hertz salfagio tone helps to wipe out your unhealthy fears, drop feelings of guilt and shame, and show you how you can help restore your liver, brain, and kidney functions, which is generally where a lot of the emotional trauma is stored for those specific issues. Or Selfeggio Tone 417, that one is designed to remove the recurring negative cycles in your life, like procrastination, addiction, and junk food. Watch as sluggishness and lethargy disappear and project productivity and creativity increase. And in turn, in, in, it will enhance your digestion, ease stomach issues, balance your metabolism, and erase headaches. And I believe that's supposed to say lower back pain instead of lower back pain. <laughs> None of us love back pain. So, oh, you catch these things third or fourth time you go through it, don't you? First few times, you're like, you know what it's supposed to say, so that's what you read. All right, let's look at some art that will help with weight issues. <clears throat> the Inner Peace Angel. The Angel of Inner Peace helps us to reach deep within ourselves and get in touch with that calm, peaceful center that lies at the core of our very being. So just, so people go, oh, well, what, okay, now what do I do with the art? Well, having it around you is gonna be helpful. And having it as a meditative tool will be helpful as well. A beautiful uh, way to use it is to listen to your salvaggio tones and just sit and, and be surrounded by the art just gaze at it and really give yourself a chance. So diffuse essential oils, play the salfeggio tones and just gaze at the art and let it move you. Let all those things really move you. It can be a lovely gift to give yourself, especially in these crazy times we're living in. Another angel to help with weight issues is the angel of forgiveness. It is of paramount importance that we look at what seems to be bad or wrong or hurtful, all those feelings of unpleasantness, and find the gift that lies within them. The emotional healing angel. Let this angel of emotional healing work with you to lovingly move through the process of letting go of the emotional baggage and limiting beliefs buried in your subconscious mind that are no longer serving you. And those very beliefs often are the ones preventing you 
from living the life of joy that you're so deserving of. This is a fascinating angel and certainly could be used in any epigenetic prescription because it really is so incredibly powerful. I use it in, in my office when I'm working with clients. Now that I'm working out in my home, I've got the angel of forgiveness, the emotional healing angel over on this side, and the activation angel on this side, and the three together really help my clients when I'm working on Zoom to break up patterns and let go of things as well. I'm all about let's get this done as quickly and efficiently and easily as possible. Fascinating story about this angel is that um, over the years when I would do shows, men would actually walk into the booth, point to that angel, and hand us their American Express card and just say that one and never even ask the price. Now, I, after it happened half a dozen or more times, in almost identically the same way, I had to stop and think, why? Why that one? And I think it's intrinsically that they know that they need emotional healing, and this one looks a little bit less angelic, and they know what they need. And on some level, they know that this is going to expedite the process for them. It's all intuitive. Because again, they don't ask what it is. They don't ask what the price is. They don't ask anything. All they know is that they love it and they need it and they want it. it made me wonder if I shouldn't double or triple the price. No, just kidding. But <laughs> it's kind of crazy. All right. Then we have the divine love angel. And that's another strong one for weight issues because it helps build that self-love. The most powerful force in the world is quite simply love. Dr. Wayne Dyer epitomized divine love. He would say, we all do. One of his most famous sayings was, we are not our bodies, our possessions, or our careers. Who we are is divine love. And that, my friends, is infinite. And so is he. So now that we've used the aromatherapy and the sound therapy and the art therapy, art therapy and the biofeedback therapy to break up and bust up all those old patterns and beliefs, now it's time to go in and create new thought patterns and beliefs. And just this is just a list of some generic ones that would be super, super helpful to counteract those old programs that we spoke about. I'm at peace with my own feelings. I am safe where I am. I create my own security. I love and approve of myself. I am protected by divine love. I am willing to grow up and take responsibility for my life. I forgive others. And I now create my own life the way I want it to be. Wow, just saying all those makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. So with, with these, I mean, there's a couple of things you can do. You can just say them. You can post them on a, on a mirror, but that's only good if you're going to say them. You can post them on your phone. Another great place to have them. Um, and one thing that you can do is to interrupt one of the body's automatic um, functions that the subconscious controls. And if you can do that, then the subconscious goes on red alert and goes, wait, wait, Will, Will Robinson, what's going on here? So let's interrupt sight. How would we interrupt our sight? You wake up in the morning, your eyes open. You don't tell your eyes to see, they just start doing what they're doing but the subconscious is controlling them. So if you take your finger and you put it, I'm just gonna stop the share here for a minute, make this a little bit easier, oh my goodness, escape. There we go, stop, share. All right, so if you put your finger about nine inches in front of, uh, in front of your nose and you kind of make a circle, a couple of loops, and you follow that circle with your eyes, 
I am divine love. Okay, so what happens when you are following that circle is that your subconscious is going, wait a minute, that's my job. I tell the eyes how to see. I tell the eyes what to look at. What, what's going on here? Because you are actually directing when you're following that finger. You are directing the sight process. You've taken over with your conscious mind the control of your eyes. I am love. And whatever you say next, the subconscious grabs a hold of and imprints like glue. Because it's like, whatever that is that's going on there, I better pay attention. So even before I tell you and explain it to you, I always program in, I'm divine love, I'm love, something wonderful that I want my subconscious to just maintain before I go into the explanation. And I suggest you do the same when you're sharing this with your patients, clients, or when you're doing this yourself as well. So, okay. And go back to the presentation document. There we go. Look at me, I'm getting to be an old pro at this. All right, living in the era of COVID. Thought this was topical for right now. Let's take a moment and look at an issue that has been a huge concern to all of us the coronavirus. I actually, when this first, when the pandemic first hit in March, I did a, a quick presentation on this and it was quite helpful for many of us who, who viewed it. So we're living in a pandemic and we know that we need to eat healthy and we know that we need to wash our hands a lot. We know that we need to get exercise. We know that we need to reduce our stress. But nobody's really talking about like what are the subconscious programs or beliefs that would need to be on board for a virus to activate in our physical body. Stay tuned, folks, because that's what we're gonna look at now. So the emotions behind pneumonia as a virus. Let's take a look at pneumonia, an inflammation of the lungs by infectious germs. The emotional components include tension. Tension is associated to a feeling provoked by serious external aggression, extremely painful, and it also shows that the person has no defenses of his own. And that's what's going on in the world out there. There's so much tension. And there's this sense of, I need to be protected. And who will protect me? Another thought pattern might be, I have a serious communication problem. I cannot make myself understood. I am not understood. Who will protect me and understand my suffering? Those are all fears and subconscious beliefs that I'm sure many of us have experienced in one way or another. And they're all things that we, especially right now, want to make sure we're not holding on to. So ask yourself or your client these questions. What emotional wounds are ready to be healed? What scares me about expressing what I feel? What will it take to create balance in my life? What am I trying to protect myself from? What will it take for me to process the harm I've experienced in the past? What will it take for me to honor myself? What will it take for me to assign greater value to my own needs, wants, and desires? What do I perceive that I have lost? What voices am I listening to? Are they voices of light and good? And do I need to process through a trauma or am I ready to move forward? This is really, you know, we have a lot of time on our hands. Well, I know many of us are working from home and, and helping uh, to homeschool children and do all kinds of things right now. But 
we don't have as much socializing going on. So we have a little bit more time on our hands. And it's a perfect time to really get in there and look at things like this, to look at what's going on in the subconscious, to look at what our old patterns are, to take some time and do some personal growth and development. So let these questions be questions that will be helpful for you. And then let's look at what are some oils? What's some aromatherapy that we can use to release these unhealed emotional wounds? Breathe, Wang Lang, Geranium, Rose, Align, Jasmine, and Holiday Joy all help unhealed emotional wounds. If someone's feeling desperate or ho hopeless, Bergamot, excellent for that. If you're exhausted, how many of us are exhausted from all that's going on in the world right now? If you're drained of energy, strength, or desire, or have a feeling of physical or emotional fatigue, breathe, citrus, bliss, and past tense are all helpful. And I just find that really, really interesting. Breathe, lung issues, makes so much sense, right? Emotional imbalance feeling emotional disturbances, or a lack of peace and steadiness. The oil, oils for this are serenity, citrus bliss, and past tense. Again, you can see some overlap in here. And the overlap is often the ones that I say make sure. So if I was going to pick three just off the top of my head, I'd go breathe, citrus bliss, and past tense, because it's coming up in a multitude of places. And what the heck? So many people today have tons and tons of these oils. So if you're like me, you have a medicine cabinet full of oils. All right, so let's just look at lung problems in general. Lung issues are often caused by a feeling that we do not have the right to live life fully. People with respiratory problems have difficulty living life, protecting themselves from the exterior or even expressing themselves in the presence of people who assault them. Lung-related tensions are thus connected to the feeling of being assaulted by someone, and simultaneously a fear of death, whether physical or simply the end or death of a cycle or a relationship. It may actually be the fear of losing a relationship. It could be the fear of dying, which is the fear of releasing the last breath. The person is very scared of not being able to breathe. It must be stressed again that we, what we mean by attack is not something objective. We refer to what the person felt as being a form of attack. So it's, it's the trauma of a situation that they felt attacked in that gets stored in the tissues and the emotions surrounding that trauma, as we said earlier, are the glue that holds the issues in the tissues, which is not where we want them. So let's let them go. And let's look at the oils that can help with lung-specific issues. Grief is huge when it comes to lung issues. So anybody that's grieving right now, we want to help them move the, through that process in an expedited yet healthy way. So oils such as Breathe, Deep Blue, and Geranium, perfect for that. Feelings of betrayal, Geranium and Lang Lang. Feelings of unworthiness, Bergamot and Copaiba. Unhealed emotional wounds, we look at breathe, lang lang, geranium, rose, align, jasmine, and holiday joy. Feelings of desperate or hopeless, bergamot. Feelings of exhaustion, we have breathe, citrus bliss, and past tense. Feeling imbalanced, we have serenity, citrus bliss, and past tense. And again, here I went in and highlighted some of the ones that are 
showing up multiple times. Again, intuition though, guys. Use your intuition. Use a pendulum. Use muscle testing. Whatever it is that is your intu intuitive guidance. That's what you should use to make the decisions on as to which ones specifically are best for you or best for your clients. And there are two specific self-regio tones that I recommend for this type of emotional clearing and one that I recommend to clear physical toxins. So let's look at the emotional ones first. 396 hertz is for transforming grief into joy and guilt into forgiveness. Just listening to these is gonna be amazing. 417 clears negativity and removes subconscious blockages. 417 hertz is one of the beautiful self agio frequencies which is known to wipe out all the negativity inside of us. It's a frequency that can bring change. It marks the start of new beginnings in life. And it is so powerful that it can reverse and undo negative emotions. You know, people can listen to these during the day while they're working. People can listen to them when they're meditating. People can listen to them when they're going to sleep at night. And Whole Tones offers you an ability to either download the MP3s from their site or buy CDs. But you can also go on YouTube and find a lot of self agio tones on there. And sometimes the meditations will be two, three hours long. Now, I, again, I'd start out slow because most people don't realize how powerful these are. But that's an option, and they're free when you do it that way. So when we're looking at, at clearing out physical toxins, um, there is... 741. 741 hertz physically cleanses the body from all types of toxins. So again, fabulous tool to do that, as is this wonderful little Healy device. Catch the light just right so that there isn't a lot of glare or sun coming in. So anyway, it's a little tiny, tiny device, the Healy biofeedback device that's controlled by apps on your phone, and you can bust up toxins that way as well. The apps on your phone get loaded with the frequencies that get transferred to the quantum sensor that gets emitted into your uh, quantum field, and each frequency gets transmitted in, and, and you have frequencies to cleanse the body of toxins, you have frequencies to, uh, so to give you the frequency of everything from uh, a homeopathic to an amino acid to a bush or Bach flower essence. So amazing stuff. We're so blessed to live in a world where there's so many tools that we can help ourselves with. And the beauty of, of everything we're talking about here today is, you know, when this pandemic hit, we couldn't even go to the doctor, most of us, unless it was like COVID-related situation. Most doctors and dentists were putting everything on hold. Well, these are all things you can do in the comfort of your own home. Comfort of your own home. You can use aromatherapy, art therapy, sound therapy, biofeedback therapy, and affirmations. We're so blessed. All right, let's again look at some art that are going to help with viral lung infections. Again, we have the inner peace angel. She's so calming. I just kind of go, ah, every time I look at her. Again, the emotional healing angel. Let this angel of emotional healing work with you to lovingly move through the process of letting go of the emotional baggage and limiting beliefs buried in your subconscious mind that are no longer serving you and preventing you from living a life of joy you so deserve. Again, we have divine love. You're getting the feeling that there's a lot of crossover 
and emotions that create a lot of these different diseases. It's very true. And here we have the angel of hope. Seriously. In the midst of this pandemic, what's the one thing we all want more of? I'm guessing it's hope. So here, let's just take a look at what the angel of hope's message is. The angel of hope reminds us that we have the power to resolve things that seem to be bothering us. As co-creative spiritual beings having a human experience, we need only remember who we really are and put our power into action. The first thing we must do is stop buying into the illusion of the situation. So perfect for this time. Rather than listening to the critics, naysayers, and skeptics, and believing that the sky is falling, perhaps we should remember what is truth. Things aren't really falling apart. Rather, they're changing, growing, and evolving into something so much grander and greater than anything we have ever known. It's simply, to do, it's simply time to do things better. It's not a revolution we're seeking. It's a kinder, gentler, more loving approach to life that we're after. And that, folks, includes business, finances, world affairs, and even our own interpersonal relationships. We must get a crystal clear picture of what we'd like our world and our lives to look like. We must believe with all our heart and all our soul that we can have what it is we are wanting. In fact, we have to believe it so much that we can actually feel the excitement of how we will feel when we actually have it. So think about the end result. We wanna live in a better world. We wanna live in a healthier world. We want to live in a world that's free of all the stressors. You know, the United States is having a, a bigger challenge with this pandemic than nearly any other country. But the reality is we rank about 45th on the list when it comes to health and wellness in the industrialized countries. 45th. America, the land everyone wants to live in. I heard that statistic and I was baffled, blown away. And then I thought about it and we are under such stress to live the American dream, to have a certain type of house, to have a 401k, to have college education funds, to have the ability to send our kids to college, to do so many things that there are these standards that we all hold ourselves to. And we put that in front of everything else, the almighty dollar and making that much money so that we can have all those things. And then we go and we work crazy, crazy hours. We don't take care of ourselves physically by getting enough exercise. And, and so many, so many in this country eat unhealthy fast foods. They're not thinking about organic. They're not thinking about, you know, farm to table meals. They're not even thinking about the value of family. We've got to get back to our roots, to what's really important. And when we do, we stop caring about those standards. It's gonna shift and change a lot of things. You let go of that stuff and focus on feeling good, taking care of your emotions and your subconscious beliefs, eating organic, getting exercise, drinking fr fresh water, enjoying your family, your loved ones, your friends, and letting go of some of those high standards. I think we're all gonna be a whole lot healthier. Okay, I got up on a tangent. But I'm kind of passionate about all that, too. So let's look at some affirmations that will help release those um, issues that are creating lung problems. 
I am now finding new hope each day. I can now allow grace to carry me. I am now covered in peace and protection. I now allow divine love to be forever by my side. I was born with intrinsic worth and value. I now reject belittling thoughts about myself. I invite you to say these out loud with me. Let's go through it again and just really feel it. I am now finding new hope each day. I can now allow grace to carry me. I am now covered in peace and protection. I now allow divine love to be forever by my side. I was born with intrinsic worth and value. I now reject belittling thoughts about myself. Just feel into that for a minute. And while you do, while you do, I'm going to adjust the lighting a little bit, or I'm going to have sun in my eyes. So imagine you haven't even necessarily been smelling the um, flower essences or essential oils. You haven't been listening to the affirmations. You haven't been seeing the art. But just saying these affirmations is already having a calming effect on your entire nervous system and shifting those old beliefs. Here are some affirmations specifically to counteract the emotional patterns behind pneumonia. Again, I invite you to say these out loud with me. I am now perfectly supported in every moment. I am open to trusting that I am safe to be me. I freely take in divine ideas that are filled with the breath and the intelligence of life. I am so cherished, valued, and worthy of love time, and attention. I am now allowed to listen to and follow my inner voice. This guides me to what is right for me. There is now hope bringing light to my path. Good things are now in store for me. There is now hope bringing light to my path. Good things are now in store for me. Doesn't that feel yummy? So let's visualize a COVID-free world. You know, as, as we all do this, we're impacting the mass consciousness. It's not just ourselves that we're helping. We're actually helping to create a COVID-free world. So just for a moment, close your eyes and see kind hands placed over your heart to hold you and heal you. And imagine a sense of renewal coming over your heart. See yourself removing protective gear from your body. And imagine restorative light and love surrounding you. Imagine identifying and sending gratitude to your inner voice. See light and love steady and comforting your mind, your heart your body, and your soul. And then imagine fresh wind blowing new life over you, clearing out the old dead things 
and filling your lungs with new hope for a brighter future. And just breathe that in. And know that you're healthy and whole. And know that you are not a vibrational match to this virus. You are not a vibrational match to disease. You are healthy, whole, and complete. And so it is. And when you feel ready, you can gently bring yourself back to this room and back to the present moment. And have a sip of water with me. Wow, didn't that feel yummy? We, you know, we really do have the ability to take control over our destiny. You're no more likely to contract COVID than you are to contract any quote unquote family patterns that have gotten passed down through the DNA. Because you have the ability to live a healthier life. You have the ability to think differently. You have the ability to feel differently. And those feelings are so important. Those feelings set off the chemical reaction that triggers the DNA. So when those emotions come up that are less than supportive of health and well-being, I encourage you to ask yourself this question. What's the next best thought? And you can't always go from, oh crap, I just hugged someone that just got off a plane from Kuwait because his dad just committed suicide and he hasn't been in quarantine at all. What have I just exposed myself to? You can't necessarily go from that to, oh, no big deal, I'm fine. But you can go to, you know what? I can manage my thoughts and emotions around all this and make sure that I'm not a vibrational match to having my DNA trigger anything. That you can do. So when I say, what's the next best thought? That's what I mean. Okay. I would love to say, does anybody have any questions right now? <laughs> and... All I can say is write them down, take note of them, and shoot me an email. And if you do email me, you might want to text me or message me on Facebook and uh, let me know because I sometimes get overwhelmed with emails. But I do check Messenger and my texts on a more consistent and regular basis. So If you want to reach out to me on Facebook, it's Lori, L-O-R-I, Daniel, D-A-N-I-E-L, Falk, F-A-L-K, just your friend request. Um, and send me a message that says, I, I was listening to your genes or not your destiny workshop, and then I'd like to ask you some questions. Um, Lori.falk at me.com is my email. And... 262-442-2464 is my phone number for texting. Texting is generally the best. Um, I may call you back right away or it may not be till the next day or so because it's just easier for me to see the texts and know what it is that you're interested in discussing and then fit you in between client sessions. So, all of that said, let's take a look at an epigenetic prescription. For, this is 
One was for a client who had depression and Parkinson's. The word depression comes from the Latin word deprimo, meaning to subdue and to repress. Depression is guilt. Guilt, which is the same as saying a violence turned inwards, has its causes in something that took place outside of the person, either with someone or something, often with people who are very close. And because the person cannot solve nor even face up to this conflict, that he has with the outside. He blames that need for aggressiveness he feels towards others and turns it inwards. Depression is often referred to as a subtle way to suicide. It's certainly what I have long referred to as the silent illness, the secret illness. Most people when they're depressed, retreat, they isolate. They often shun and try to get out of responsibilities and not act, they merely vegetate. And so often the outside world doesn't even know that the person is depressed. Because they, when they do see them, when they do see that person, that person smiles and puts on a happy face. I mean, even if that's just 10 minutes of their day, or an hour or two of their week that they're smiling. Often they're living in silent pain. My brother committed suicide recently. And I, because I have dealt with major depressive disorder myself, I understand the depths of that pain. I understand the hiding. I understand the not letting anyone know because the thought process is no one would ever want to see this. It's ugly. No one would ever want to be around this. If I show this side of myself, I'll lose my loved ones and friends. That's the thought process that goes on and that's why it gets hidden. The person who is suffering from depression will be a person with serious disturbances often at the level of direction or the path that they should take in their life. During the grieving process surrounding my brother's transition, I was asked the question, how did you survive? And why didn't he? And my best answer was that I prayed to God over and over and over again to show me what I was here for, to show me what my purpose was, and to give me a reason for being. And I don't think there's any doubt. And when I say I prayed, I mean on my hands and knees, sometimes laying prone on the floor, day in and day out, over the course of several years. In between the tears, I pray. And I don't think it's any, there's any doubt at all that this was all divinely guided and that it all came from those prayers. These epigenetic prescriptions, the epigenetic emotional healing art, they're all gifts from God. Gifts that I now get to share with you. Gifts that give me a reason for living, a reason for being. Gifts that bring joy to my life. And I'm so honored and grateful to be able to share them with you. And that's probably part of the reason that I threw the depression piece in here today, was that I wanted, it's so, on top of COVID right now, Depression is, is so prevalent. Calls to suicide hotlines are up 6,000%. It's crazy. Suicides have increased. The numbers keep changing, but they've increased so much, so, so very, very much. And so 
I just ask you to share these epigenetic prescriptions with as many people as you can, because we don't know what's going on inside of them, but we can help this way. You can get through to someone who has a depressive disorder by doing an epigenetic prescription, whereas you might not be able to get to them, get through to them if you went directly with the fact that they quote unquote have depression. Interesting. Parkinson's. Again, this specific client had depression and then has subsequently developed Parkinson's. It's not necessarily that the two go hand in hand. However, they can because depression can be a dopamine deficiency, which is also what triggers Parkinson's. Okay, so let's look at what the emotional root causes are to this stuff and help to reverse that if someone already has it or help to prevent it if they don't. So Parkinson's disease reveals an inhibition of an, of an agitation, of an anger process, and the inhibition of a reaction process. People who for a long time had to accept other people's control without being able to react, or who did not let themselves explode, may develop Parkinson's. Parkinson's disease occurs to people who feel deeply upset about what they do. The person who suffers from Parkinson's disease is afraid of isolation, but will not admit it. There's some, those are some pretty deep wounds. So let's take a look at what are the essential oils that help with issues such as depression and Parkinson's, what will help lift the emotional components and subconscious programs. Top of the list, geranium, the oil of love and trust, encourages emotional honesty, assists in healing emotional wounds, heals the broken heart, softens anger. Wild orange, the oil of abundance, addresses feelings of scarcity, of being over serious, rigid, or being a workaholic. Serenity, the calming blend, has a powerful effect on the heart, relaxes perfectionistic expectations, and helps heal the emotional wounds in the heart. Arborvitae, the oil of divine grace, assists individuals who believe or act like all progress must be made through struggle and solitary effort helps one to let go of control. Vetiver is the oil of centering that connects us with our inner emotions, supports all self-awareness work, challenges the need to escape from inner pain. Frankincense is the oil of truth, specifically addresses any distancing or abandonment from father issues addresses abandonment overall, and reminds you that you are loved and protected. Casio, the oil of self-assurance, brings gladness and courage to the heart and soul. So these are all the oils that are highly recommended for these two specific issues. And when I fill out these epigenetic prescription forms for my clients, I don't just list the oils. I go in and I list just like this, what it is, what, what its main theme is, and the, the emotions and feelings that it helps with so that they can really get a feel for, you know, which one are they called to, which one are they guided to versus just a name. These are the recommended self tones for depression and Parkinson's issues. And again, I often have it just like this where I list all of them and I bold out in red the, the two that are the most important and say start with these and then move into the other two. So for, in this case, it's 396 for liberating guilt and fear. And 
639 for connecting in relationships. This particular client needed to heal and forgive the father issues that he was dealing with from over the years. So I wanted him to start with that first. And then move into 444, the master key that envelops you in peace in the midst of chaos. Could we not all use that one right now? Oh my goodness. And then 528, transformation and miracles. It's the love frequency for cellular repair and it helps to balance hormones. Again, I often give them the link, holtones.com, that they can click on, or I refer them to YouTube. All right, let's take a look at some healing art for depression and Parkinson's. Here we have the Angel of Allowing. The angel of allowing keeps things in the flow and eliminates resistance. The angel of allowing allows the universe to support us. Such a beautiful angel, just, just, it just reminds me of water, just flowing. The all is well angel, all is well. All is in divine order. And the golden rainbow of joy. The golden rainbow of joy angel tells us to attract more joy, we must understand that everything is occurring in perfect timing. She reminds us that hurrying and trying to force things to happen is futile. And even with all the chaos unfolding around all of us, if we could just remember that you have to have a breakdown of the old systems before you can create newer and healthier systems, just like we're doing internally with the subconscious programs. It's all a reflection of what's happening externally in the world. And once again, the all time favorite, the emotional healing angel, not to be redundant. It's just super, super, super powerful and super potent. It can help bust up all that stuff. You stand in front of this angel. You can probably, many of you, I'm sure, are so sensitive you can feel it right off the screen. But when you stand in the presence of this angel, it's just like your heart just explodes, expands. You get much better for it than explodes. We don't want our hearts exploding, but expanding, yes. Okay, some healing affirmations for depression and Parkinson's. I lovingly release the past and turn my attention to this new day. All is well. I now go beyond other people's fears and limitations. I'm creating the life of my dreams. It is safe for me to trust and follow my heart's desires. I bring joy back to the center of my heart. I express love to all. I joyously release the, peace, the past and I am at peace. I express myself freely and joyously. I speak up for myself with ease. I am willing to change. I am filled with faith in my future. I just want to share with you that My client who I did this particular epigenetic prescription for, I think that was about six months ago. And about, let's see, three months ago. His girlfriend started incorporating the resonance, the Healy resonance analysis into the affirmations, the aromatherapy, the art therapy, and the self tones. And I had an opportunity to see him about a month into all of that, about a month into her adding the Healy resonance analysis piece into it. I was literally shocked at how 
much he had improved. If you didn't know that he had Parkinson's, you would have never noticed. His cognitive thinking was, was amazing. He was able to have an incredible conversation. He was spot on. He was thinking clearly about business plans in the future and it was so magical to watch. So it really is a combination of all these things that help break up those patterns and help create healthier patterns and a better, healthier being, body, mind, and spirit. Okay, so these, I'm just gonna to, um, stop the share for a moment. There we are. And it's interesting how much the lighting keeps changing. I'm in front of this big, beautiful picture window with the sun is, is getting over to the side where it's setting now. So um, I know we didn't dive deep into the ancestral pa patterning piece of wellness, but I wasn't really sure how to do it on a Zoom without it seeming redundant and repetitive. So I chose just to take a couple of um, different disease patterns and, and, and share with you once we know what the disease is, finding those emotional components. Because no matter what you do, um, once you know the diseases, whether it's the parents, grandparents, or the client, or yourself, you've got to then know what to do with it. So if we were working one-on-one -on -one with someone, we would actually be starting with the, with the grandparents and finding those diseases and the emotional stew then or the beliefs emotional subconscious beliefs that were in play that the parents were raised in and then look at did those disease patterns translate down into um, the parents generation and often they've mutated a little bit they aren't exact and then okay so what was the emotional stew then that you or the client or patient were raised in and it's so spot on and it all comes by starting with the disease first and then moving down into the emotional patterns and then releasing them. So what we've done, been doing here today throughout this entire Zoom is kind of really that piece. Okay, here we, here's the disease. Where do we find the emotional components? And then how do we break it all down and shift the subconscious beliefs? So I will be offering based upon um, desire and need, potentially um, a more in-depth training where we will actually meet one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom as, as opposed to being pre-recorded, where you can ask more questions. If there's enough interest, I'll put together a certification program. So you guys are kind of the, the debut group, if you will, that are seeing this for the first time in this amount of depth. And so I'm really looking for your feedback as to where to go from here. I'm here for you. If you want another more advanced training, we can do that. If you want a certification, we can put that together too. So the key is to make sure to let me hear from you. So now I just want to share with you, I'll go back to sharing the screen again. There we go. I'll be a whiz at this by the time we're done. So I put together a list of the top 10 cancers, their emotional conflicts, and the corresponding uh, epigenetic healing art. I'm mean, actually, one of the handouts should be an article that I wrote on this that includes all of these. But I think it's actually the top 11 or 12 cancers. It lists bladder cancer, which stems from an ugly conflict and dirty tricks. And the forgiveness angel helps there. It lists, when we get into breast cancer, when you go to the alternative-cancer-care.org site, um, they will list breast cancer in four different ways. It's left breast, right breast, milk duct, and I forget the fourth. But that's how def def 
how finitely they've defined this. Because if you look at left breast, it's a conflict concerning child, home, or mother, versus right breast, with the, which is a conflict with partner or others. And depending on what the core issue is, is going to depend on how you want to treat it. Colon cancer would be ugly, un indigestible conflict. Kidneys, not wanting to live. Water or fluid conflict. Lungs, it's a fear of dying or suffocation, including a fear of someone, a fear for someone else. Lymph glands, it's a loss of self-worth. And I take a deep breath as I, as I read that last one because my former dog, Tally, developed lymphoma. And I know that our pets often take on our things. And I will just share with you that the depressive episodes that I have dealt with over the last two and a half decades personally led to the destruction of my self-worth. Because until just recently, and when I say recently, I mean literally the last year, I have found enough homeopathic tools that I have been able to spend an entire year without falling into a, a depressive episode. An entire year. That has not happened in two and a half decades. During those two and a half decades, I was never able to, for any extended period of time, maintain my health long enough to substantially create a business for myself that was sustainable. I could coach people on certain days. I could do art on certain days. But I could go through periods of days, weeks, months, sometimes even an entire season where I was dysfunctional. And what it did was it impacted my ability to earn a substantial enough income. It destroyed my credit. It destroyed my ability to, to have the American dream. And I, like many, was so tied to that that I developed self-hatred because I kept comparing myself to everyone else my age and looking at everyone else around me and saying, you know what? I, I'm just a worthless piece of doo-doo. Do -do. I say that very lightheartedly. When I had the awareness with my coach, which was not until last December that I, that I had the awareness that this was going on, I was finally able to start loving myself again. And by loving myself again, I'm able to actually share the story with you so that you know what goes on behind the scenes with people who have depressive disorders and, and diseases. So a loss of self-worth can lead to lymphatic cancer. And I guess all I can say is thank you, Tally Ann, for helping me with that. And thank you, Sandy Phillips, my coach, for helping me to understand that I had developed this self-hatred, that I had lost my self-worth, so that I could heal this peace within me and not let that manifest into the physical. This stuff is real, you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm being vulnerable and using myself as an example here. Because I want you to know the depth of this, how real this is. A life purpose angel has been hanging in my office for decades, not decades, I shouldn't say that for years, however long she's been around, I'm not sure. But this art is potent and is powerful. The affirmations are real. And the healing from these beliefs really, truly, truly can help in so many ways. Thank you, Tally. I love you. And thank you guys for listening to my 
me sharing my vulnerability and truth. Skin cancer, a loss of integrity. Melanoma, feeling dirty, soiled, or defiled. Prostate, ugly conflict with sexual connotations. Thyroid, feeling powerless. Uterus, often a sexual conflict. And then overall, all emotional healing needs, cancer or otherwise, we list the ones that kept popping up over and over again, emotional healing. Angel, inner peace angel, angel of forgiveness and healthy living angel. So I also you'll see one of the handouts. I'm just gonna take a peek here. Yeah, and go back and stop the share for a minute. We'll go back to that screen. You have to hold your heart. There we go. Back to Zoom. Okay, all right. Oh yeah, okay. Um, so one of the handouts that you received should look some, something like this, not exact, um, but it's going to have those very um, cancers, I believe. I'm just looking through it. Yep, those same cancers. And it also lists, so it lists the type of cancer. It lists the emotional conflict. It lists the angel, and it lists the oils that will help with it. So while this certainly isn't a com comprehensive guide for all diseases, it does give you the top 10 cancers all in one place as a reference material, and you get that for attending, excuse me, this class today. Let me just take a sip of water. So, so that will be a wonderful tool for you. And I just have to tell you, my, my audience here has been this little girl. This is Gabby. And um, Gabby felt my heart energy. And she's been laying over there being a good girl through this whole thing. And she felt my heart energy. And now she's coming over here to make sure that mama's okay. So I'm just letting her say hello and letting you know that I did at least have someone listening. And, and in person. So thank you, Gabby, for listening. Thank you for your love and support. Thank you for helping mommy's heart to heal. <laughs> yes, you're a good girl. You're a good girl. So if you can sit still for a minute, you can stay up here. Um, let me just check my notes and see what else we need to cover here in the last few minutes before I let you all go. Um, all right, so this... PDF file that you're going to get that's angels and essential oils for cancer has the wrong contact info on it and it's a PDF file and I can't change it so I'm just going to share with you that um, don't call that number <laughs> I'm going to give you my contact information and you can reach me at any of these places. So let's go back and share the screen again. All right, so email. Email requests to laurie.falk at me.com. If you don't have your own essential oil account, which I would venture to guess many of you do, and you can purchase your own oils, that's a link that will get you through to my doTERRA website. Again, not at all necessary. I'm just, for those of you who are looking for one-stop shopping, that's it. Um, if you are at all interested in having a complete ancestral emotional DNA done, the price on that is $4.99. I'd be happy to do it for you. Sometimes that can be helpful so that you see how the entire process works. If you want a mini session, which means not looking at the ancestral, but just looking at whatever issues you personally currently have, that's available for $249. And you just go to head to hearthealing.com slash epigenetic.rx. So those are just options um, if you want additional information. And last but not least, 
This is the important component here. Take care of yourself, please. Drink lots of fluids. Get plenty of rest. It's highly likely that when you're doing this depth of healing work, you might feel tired. You might even feel tired just having gone over this and being exposed to a lot of this deep emotional stuff here today. So keep in mind, you should drink at least one half of your body weight in ounces daily. You should always eat a healthy organic diet and you should always exercise daily. Be sure to take a picture of this screen as it has all of my contact information on it. I'll also make sure that you get it, oops, in one of the documents as well. Again, it's Lori Daniel Falk if you're looking for me on Facebook. We have a Head to Heart Healing Community Facebook group as, all, as well that you can ask to be added to. It's filled with um, all the health and wellness information that I post. I'm not real big on posting personal stuff on Facebook, so actually the Head to Heart Healing Community group is probably the one that I would recommend that you join, but we can become friends so you can message me on Facebook as well. My phone number, it is really only two sixes and fours, so it's 262-442-2464. My email is lori, L-O-R-I dot falk at me, M-E dot com. My main website is head to heart healing.com and that's head with the number two you can get to my art website from that site and that site the art site is wisdom of the angels.com it's currently being revamped so for any reason you can't reach it just know that we that we're in kind of in transition between the old site and the new site so just email me and I'll make sure to get you whatever information you need. And then for those of you who are interested in exploring the bio feedback device that we've mentioned, the um, Healy Resonance Analysis, you just go to healyworld.net slash en.us slash partner slash head to heart healing. Again, you can, you can find that elsewhere. You might have heard heard of it from someone else I'm only saying to you it's a tool and it's a tool that can absolutely positively expedite this process expedite the process of the emotional healing so I just want to say if you have any questions reach out because I can't have you I can't have you ask the questions right now um, know from my heart and soul how much this means to me to have been able to spend this time with you here today. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for understanding that this is being done in my home and not in a production studio. And um, the perfectionist in me is just apologizing for any inadequacies and I'm going to let that go because that's just silliness that's only going to create other further issues so we'll let that go I'll go find a frequency or an oil or something to let that go I just want you to know from the bottom of my heart how much I love you how much I care about you how much I'm here for you I really meant it I don't want other people to go through what my mom went through I don't want any Buddy, to suffer needlessly. And I don't want anyone to trigger DNA, physical DNA, that doesn't need to be triggered. All we need to do is change the beliefs and thoughts and emotions that created it in our ancestors. That's all we need to do. And when we do that, and we eat healthy, and we get out from under the stress, and we meditate, exercise, do all those good, healthy things for ourselves. We can lead healthy, incredible, abundant lives. And that is my wish for all of you. Because I honestly know that your health is your wealth. I lost mine. And I almost lost my life as a result of it. In so many different ways, I almost lost my life. 
And I don't want that to happen to any of you either. So I am so grateful that I've been able to share with you my purpose, my mission, and my reason for being. I love you all. God bless. And I look forward to talking with you soon. So much love.